All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's start by saying hello to my little friend, Bugly Boo. Today, our objective is that all students will learn how to construct a bar graph and analyze data in a bar graph. Uh, we're going to be focusing on these two standards and really trying to get into when we would use a bar graph uh, and how to formulate statistical questions. So, let's go have a look. First, we have to ask ourselves, what is a bar graph? Well, you need to know a little bit about it first. At the top, you'll usually find a title, and this will help to tell us uh, what the chart will be showing us. So look at the title so you know what the chart is showing us. Next, you'll see a vertical axis. Okay, this vertical axis over here is usually labeled with uh, numbers, and those numbers will tell us uh, how often something will occur. At the bottom, you'll find a horizontal axis. And this horizontal axis often has um, some type of category or a value of some sort that it's comparing. Okay, for, in, for instance, we have one bar here, another bar here, and another bar here. And they could be comparing, I don't know, types of shirts, yellow versus green versus blue. Uh, but we use these to compare one thing to another all right and let's just take a look at another question here when do we use them as i said the most important thing to know is that we use a bar graph to compare different things okay later we'll talk about the similarities to a histogram but here we're focused on a bar graph Again, we can use this bar graph to try to answer some of these questions over here. Who studied the most? Can you answer that question? What did you come up with? Excellent. Greg studied the most. And how many hours um, did he study? And all we have to do again is look at where the bar would actually come across and cross this um, the vertical axis here. So if we made, whoo, if we made a little mark here of uh, where it crosses that vertical axis, we could see that it seems to cross right about at the 10, okay, for 10 hours. Uh, fortunately for me, I have a neat little tool that I can just move that bar right over here and check it out and it does it actually looks a little less than 10 hours for Greg okay how many hours did they study in all and if we look we could say Greg had about 10 Mike has he has right at about eight eight hours of study time and uh, Jen down here slacking with only six hours which if this is for an entire week um, maybe that's a little bit or not quite enough if it's for one day six hours that's pretty good study time okay find the mean number of hours spent studying see if you can find that mean number uh, add the numbers together let's assume that Greg ha is even with the 10 hours and then divide by the number of pieces of data what did you come up with all right eight that is correct eight would be the mean uh, number of hours spent studying. So I think we've got the basics to a bar graph. Let's move on to some more challenging questions and problems. Next we can see uh, that this bar graph is a little bit different. Um, the last one was labeled by twos on the side, but sometimes our interval, and that's the amount between each um, number on the side, our interval may have to be a little bit higher if it's going up to a higher number. We wouldn't want to label all the way from 1 to $125 because that would take forever and it would be really tough to uh, draw all your bars exactly right. So we might use the interval of 25 here. Okay, can you draw a bar for Pat if he spent $40? Go ahead and try to do this on your own. 
in a little bit we'll check over it. Also, think about how much more did Eva and Adele spend than Sue and Dylan. Notice the words, how much more. Again, that's comparing things. Maybe you can come up with a question uh, that compares different things on this bar graph. Pause the screen, discuss your questions, and then you can push play and we'll move on. Okay, so how does your bar look? Did you make Pat write a, a little bit less than 50 but more than 25? It should be over halfway too because $40 is closer to 50 than it is to 25. And for the question, what did you get? About $75 more uh, they, they spent than Sue and Dylan? That's what I got. Sometimes we have to look very carefully at the bar. And in my case, I'm lucky that I can actually move my bar over and see that this one is probably about $105 or $110. And this one here is right at $75. When I combine Sue and Dylan, they come out um, right at about 110 again. So maybe it would be closer by saying about $75 more. All right, what kind of questions did you come up with? Maybe who spent the most amount of money? Uh, maybe it would be who spent the least amount of money? What is about the mean amount of money spent? So we're going to move on again. Now it's time for you to create your own bar graph using the data. Um, these are the different ways that Devin spends his money each month. $350 on rent, $100 on gasoline, $150 on the internet and cable, $225 on food, and $300 on entertainment. Go ahead, pause the screen, and create your own bar graph. Think very carefully about your interval. What will you make the interval? You probably don't want to use one or even fives. Ten might even be too small. So discuss it with a partner and make your own bar graph. Then you can unpause the screen and we'll go over it. Okay, so let's check and see how you did. When you did this problem, we need to look at the interval first. I chose a $50 interval. It wasn't too much, uh, but it did go a little bit higher than my other bar graph. Also, at the bottom, you should have listed the different things that he was spending his money on. Again, a bar graph is used to compare. So on your own, I want you to take another little bit of time to develop some of your own statistical questions for this bar graph. And discuss maybe what some of the answers are with your class. Pause the screen, and then we'll move on. Okay, we're ready to move on. I hope you came up with some really good questions there. Moving on to the next part. Here we're looking at, it says, which of the following would best be displayed using a bar graph? Check all that apply. So we have to determine which of these is going to work best for a bar graph. And look, there's old Bogley Boo again. Go ahead and discuss it, and then we'll go through the answers. Okay, which ones did you check off for a bar graph? It's not all of them. This one? Yes. Compare the salaries of five teachers within a school. You can compare that and draw a bar graph for five teachers. How about this one? Yes. Favorite school lunch for students in a class. Okay, again, you could compare several different types of school lunches. Compare prices of beef at 150 different markets around the U.S. No, that would be a very difficult one to make a bar graph for. In a little bit, we're going to discuss, actually, you could use a histogram to help show the frequencies of the different prices for beef on these different markets. 
Okay, how about this one? Compare semester exams for uh, our scores for the top five students. Yes? Good. Again, five students you could easily put into a bar graph uh, to compare them. And the last one, compare the heights of all 225 students in the sixth grade. No, that would not be um, a good one to make a bar graph for, especially considering that some of the heights could be uh, very different. There might be five foot one inch and five foot one and a quarter inch, five foot three inches. So with all those different ranges in there, we would actually want to use something called a histogram, which helps us to see the, the frequency or measures frequencies and allows us to compare the ranges of these different things. If we look at this example, you can see that at the bottom down here, we have the height and feet, but we have a frequency or a range, or excuse me, we have a range down here, um, less than three feet tall, three to four feet, four to five, five to six, six to seven. So I've got a statistical question for you. Does this look accurate for sixth graders in their heights out of 225 students or approximately? No, it would not be very accurate unless we were teaching at a school where um, many of the students had skipped grades or something like that because we have a lot of them that are under three feet tall. And this isn't very accurate for a sixth grader. It would probably be between four and five feet. So in order to make it a little bit better, we might actually switch these. Um, that might be more accurate. Okay. Uh, but this is a histogram, and again, it's similar to a bar graph, but will often display data by listing the frequencies of data. Numbers are usually put into ranges to compare or measure the frequency of something. So here are the frequency of students that are measuring less than three feet, or between three and four feet, and so on. All right, well, I hope this helped you out with bar graphs. So... You got it, and you just made Bogley Boo smile. See ya!